How do we receive redemption blessings that we can enjoy here in this life? In part 1 of this series, we established that fact that redemption is a present tense reality with blessings that affect our spiritual life as well as our daily natural life on earth. Let's stand up and uh, make our declaration this morning and uh, then we will proceed to spend time in God's word. So, let's all rise up to our feet, please. If you brought if you brought your bible i want you to hold it high up in the air and let's say this out loud bold and strong this is god's word this is god speaking to me i am who god says i am i can do what god says i can do i will become everything god has promised i'm saved healed delivered redeemed i am blessed victorious prosperous triumphant i'm a minister of god a servant of christ and a channel of his blessing to many people i receive his word i believe his word and i live by his word christ is my master and to him i am in absolute surrender in jesus name Amen. God bless you. Why don't you turn around to people next to you, in front of you, behind you, shake hands, smile, say hello, give them your name. And uh then you may be seated, please. We're going to read a few verses of scripture first to begin our our study of God's word this morning so if you have your bibles let's turn to three references first we'll go to romans then we go to colossians and then we go to first corinthians so we'll go to romans chapter 5 and uh, we'll read verse we we'll look at verse 12 romans 5 verse 12 and then we will go to colossians chapter 1 after that and then from there we'll go to first corinthians chapter 6 so romans chapter 5 verse 12 the bible says here therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned I'll read again just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and this thus death spread to all men because all sinned Let's go to Colossians chapter 1 we'll read uh, verses 12 to 14 Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 to 14 Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 to 14 Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light So we'll just pause there a moment tell your neighbor I'm qualified <laughs> It says giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us or he has made us fit to be partakers partners sharers participators to partake of the inheritance of the saints that is what he gives to his children his sons and daughters his the saints he has qualified us to participate or partake of that and then he continues in verse 13 he has delivered us from the power of darkness so tell your neighbor i'm delivered he he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed or transferred or translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins 
And we want to read one more verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we'll read verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. It says, For you were bought at a price. Tell a neighbor, I've been bought. You were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Belong to God. Redemption. That's what we want to talk about over the next few Sundays. We want to talk about receiving redemption blessings. Romans 5 tells us that through one man's sin, death came into this world. And that passed upon every person. I mean, every person born is born under sin, born under death. Every person. For what, by one man sin came into this world and death through sin and death passed upon all. For all have sinned. So we've all been born in that place of bondage, in that place of enslavement. To sin, to death. Now when we talk about death, it's not just physical death. It's part of it. But it's really spiritual death, which is really being cut off from God. And when we are cut off from God, that's a dangerous place to be. Because when you are cut off from God, it means that powers of darkness now have control over us, authority over us. So really, we were all in a place of enslavement, in subjection. All right. So I need five young men to come up to the stage, please. This is an impromptu skit. All right. Okay. Five volunteers. Uh, guys, and we need, let's move this table, uh, not this table, this pulpit, <laughs> let's move to the side, please. Okay. Okay. This has been, this has not been rehearsed. Okay. <laughs> so we are going to do something here. All right. I need one of you to stand here as God. <laughs> Both want to be God. Right? <laughs> no, no, that's okay. So you just come, come a little so that people can see you don't hide behind the screen. Okay, Nirbal, you come the other side, please. Okay, let's imagine. Okay, this is God. Okay, all this is imaginary, right? This is God, and this is His kingdom, the kingdom of light. Right? And three of them are demons. <laughs> no, no, no. This is all imaginary, okay? It's not real. So, so any three, and one is a person that we want to, who wants to stand? Okay. Uh, Akil, you stand in the middle. Uh, three of you just pretend, right? So you, uh, you surround them, hold, make, make a circle, hold them. Hold, so, uh, so hold your hands together. I mean, your hands. Okay, so look, he is enslaved. Right? So this is the spiritual realm, okay? So tell your neighbor, spiritual realm. So what you're seeing now is in the realm of the spirit, not in the natural. In the realm of the spirit, every one of us, when we are born, we are born like this. We are born in sin, controlled by death, under the power. If you want to kneel down a little, it's going to be a little bit more dramatic. <laughs> we are enslaved to sin, the powers of darkness controlled no hope we're born like that all of us for by one man sin came to this world death through sin death passed on all men for all have sin death is just separation from god which means we're cut off from god which means we're enslaved by sin by death by sickness by disease by satan by demons all of us holding us down that was not god's intent but that's the way we are until Colossians 1.13 happens. God has delivered us from the power of darkness. And translated us into the kingdom of his own dear son. 
in whom, in Christ, in whom we have redemption. So the word redemption is powerful. It means to set a captive free from slavery to the payment of a ransom. To redeem, to buy back, to buy out of slavery, to bring a person out of enslavement, redemption. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The blood was the price Jesus offered up before God and saying, I'm, with this blood, I'm canceling all their sins and I'm bringing them out of enslavement. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. See, sin was what gave the devil the right to enslave us because we were born in sin. We were born that way. But when Jesus offered his blood and canceled our sin, the forgiveness of our sins, we can experience redemption. So imagine Akil hears the gospel. Akil, why don't you pray? He prays and he calls upon the name of Jesus. And he says, Jesus, I believe in you. I receive your free gift of salvation. Come into my life. If you want to say this prayer with me, Akil. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, receive you. I receive you. As my savior, I believe, in you. I believe in you. You died for me. You died for me. Your blood cleanses me. Your blood cleanses me. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my, Lord. Be my savior. Be my savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And he prays that prayer. Jesus sets him free and translates him into the kingdom of lights. So, in the spiritual realm. He has gone. God, you can stay here. <laughs> God has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his own dear son. Amen. So now he's in the kingdom of light. And not only is he in the kingdom of light, Colossians 1.12 says that he has qualified us. To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. That means not only is he in the kingdom of light, but he is now being qualified to enjoy all that the Father gives to his people. That means he can enjoy, he's already there. Qualified, nothing more to be done. He doesn't have to go to Bible college. He doesn't have to read his Bible 25 times. Nothing. He is already qualified. To partake of the inheritance that God has for his children in the light. And in the spiritual realm. This is all spiritual realm. Don't mind, right? The powers of darkness have no access to him. Because he is in the kingdom of light. He is in a place of immunity in the spiritual realm. Are you with me? In the spiritual realm. He is in the kingdom of light. God has delivered us from the powers of darkness. The powers of darkness have no more claim over us. So let's say that together. God has delivered us from the powers of darkness. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his own dear son. The powers of darkness... I have no claim over me, no place in me, no control over me. That is true in the spiritual realm. Amen? You're in a place of immunity. You're in the kingdom of God's dear son. But here's the problem. Come into the natural world now. So now we are in the natural world. We are in the physical world. In our daily life. What happens? Okay, if you stand here. Okay, three of you guys come. One of you blindfold him. One of you hold his hands. One of you hold his feet, please. So in the natural realm, in our daily life, in the world. This is now in the everyday life. The devil, the enemy. He cannot touch us in the spirit. In the spirit, we are in Christ. In the spirit, we are in the kingdom. So in the natural world, he can only try to gain access through our flesh and through our minds. 
So what does he do? He tries to blind us to the truth. If you don't know the truth, you can't walk in your redemption here on earth. I don't know. So imagine a prisoner, he's sitting in the prison, but, you know, he has been acquitted. In, he's been acquitted. He, he has the right to come out of prison. But if he doesn't know the fact that he can come out of prison, he's blinded. He's going to be still sitting there. So one of the things the devil does in the natural realm is to blind us from the truth. If you don't know the truth, you're not going to enjoy your redemption blessings. Are you understanding? He blinds us. I don't know the truth. I don't know that I am redeemed. I don't know that I've been delivered and translated into God's kingdom. I don't know there are redemption blessings. And I don't know how to receive them. Blinded. So you just go through life not knowing what is ours. That there is an inheritance that has been given to the saints in lights. Or he tries to enslave us through the flesh, through maybe through sin. Tries to pull us down, our temptations. Or he tries to trip us up, putting obstacles in our way, challenges in our way. And it's like, okay, maybe this is not really going to work. It's really hard. I can't move. But does that change anything in the realm of the spirit? No. In the realm of the spirit, okay, back to your positions, please. <laughs> in the realm of the spirit, he is in the kingdom of? And the powers of darkness have no access over him in the spiritual realm. But in the natural, they try to keep us from enjoying what God has given to us as our redemption blessings. Thank you, guys. Let's give them a good hand. And you can go back. Just, okay, just need some help here with the, uh, with the pulpit. I'll kill or somebody, some of you guys. Can, thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. So that's all the enemy can do. He can only try to touch us in the natural through the flesh or the minds. And he will do it in order to keep us from receiving our redemption. Bless you. So what do you want to do over the next few Sundays is talk about how do we receive our redemption blessings? How do you receive it? How do you and I walk in this? So today, we just want to understand a little bit about our redemption blessings. Just get a little insight to it and then I will build on it in the weeks to come. But here's the premise I want us to begin with. Everything Adam lost in the Garden of Eden... Jesus regained and gave to us through his cross. Do you believe that? Yeah. So when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't do a half half work. 50% now, I'll come back and do the next 50%. He said, it is finished, 100%. Amen? He finished the work. He's not going to come back a second time to die on the cross. Is that right? He's not going to come back. He finished the work. 100%. So everything Adam lost in the garden, Jesus paid for. He died on the cross to redeem that, redeem it and give it back to us as the redeemed of the Lord. He did a complete work on the cross. Now, we understand that part of our redemption is now and part of our redemption is future. Part of the redemption, so you have this whole package of redemption blessings. Part of it we are going to enjoy now. Part of it we will enjoy in the future. Like it says in, in Ephesians 1, 13, 14, He has sealed us 
and until the redemption of the purchased possession. That means there is coming a time when we will enjoy the fullness of our redemption. And, and Romans 8, 23 talks about our body, which right now we are groaning in this body. But a time will come and we will have glorified bodies. Right? So that's in the future when, when we will have resurrected bodies. And so that part of our redemption is in the future. And all there's things that God has planned and stored up for us uh, in the life after this. And so that's in the future. We'll rule and reign with him and, and, and so on. There's plenty of things up in the future. But then there's also part of the redemption that is for us here and now. The Bible says, Colossians 1.14, In him we have redemption. That means it's present tense. It doesn't say in him we are going to have redemption. In him we have redemption. He has delivered us from the powers of darkness. So part of our redemption is now. Part of the redemption is in the future. We understand that. But what I want us to understand is this. That redemption includes both spiritual and natural blessings. Our redemption blessing. If you want to look at it as a package. It includes natural blessings. It includes spiritual blessings. So what are spiritual blessings that come to us because of our redemption in Christ? For example, we have been made the righteousness of God. We are righteous in God's eyes. We are heirs of God. We are joint heirs. We are sons and daughters of God. We have been made to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. All these are spiritual blessings, blessings in the spiritual realm. But they are also blessings that affect our natural are you with me so far? As part of our redemption blessing. There are blessings that affect our spiritual life. There are blessings that affect our natural life. Because he says, if we read that, 1 Corinthians 6.20. You have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit. Body and spirit. Which are God's. So God has bought you and me spirit soul and body every part of us is his it belongs to him it's been redeemed so your body is redeemed your mind is redeemed every part of you is redeemed it is god's purchased possession now you've been bought with a price the devil has no right over you actually it's body mind nothing it's all been bought by the blood of jesus christ amen you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body, mind, spirit, everything has been bought, belongs to God. Amen? You've been redeemed. So, here's the thing. I'm redeemed. But if I don't do my part to receive my redemption blessings, I will still enjoy the future. But while going through the earth, God can't do anything more. He says, I already provided for you. But you're not receiving it. You're not taking it. You're not making advantage of it. Are you with me? So you and I should understand what are our redemption blessings? What has God given to me as an inheritance, as a son or daughter of God in his kingdom? What are those blessings that I can enjoy here and now? And sure, the things that I'm going to enjoy later on will come later on, will come in eternity. But what has God given to me here and now that I should walk in? And I should learn how to receive it. Amen? Because there is a devil... Is going to try and keep it away. He doesn't want you and me to walk in it. He's going to try to keep it away. Now if you and I don't do our part to receive it, God can't do anything more. He's, he's paid for it all. He's given it to you and me. He's not going to force it on us. We have to do our part of receiving it. So that's why I want to call this series Receiving Redemption Blessings. What must I do to receive those blessings and walk in it here on earth? While I journey through life, what must I do? What must you do? 
How do we receive that? But let's just get an understanding of the blessings of God. And like I said, you know, there are spiritual blessings, there are natural blessings. There are things that affect us in our spiritual life, there are things that affect our natural life, the way we live everyday life. And I want to just talk a little bit about that. You know, many times we relegate all the blessings of God only to spiritual things. It is true. There are ble spiritual, the blessings of spiritual realm, uh, uh, more of the anointing of God, more of the grace of God, uh, and all of that. But understand that God wants to bless you and me even in our natural everyday life. So let's look a little bit about the Old Covenant. Now we're going to look at the Old Covenant. We're going to look at Deuteronomy 28, which was given in the Old Covenant. I just want to look at that one passage and we will close. Deuteronomy 28 was given under the Old Covenant. It was given to, uh, in the covenant given through Moses. There are five major covenants in the Bible. Five major, there are many other smaller ones and between people and between kings and all that. But five major covenants between God and man. The first one was the covenant God made with Noah. He said, I'm giving the rainbow as a sign. Second one was through Abraham. A blood covenant. Circumcision was a sign. And through Abraham, he gave a covenant. Third, through Moses. This was a blood covenant through the sacrifices. A blood covenant established through Moses with the people of Israel. And it given the, the commandments, the Ten Commandments and the other ordinances as part of that covenant. The fourth covenant was through David, with David, King David. He said, David, because, you know, I'm going to make sure that the, your, someone from your lineage is going to rule. Uh, and the throne of David will be established forever. A covenant made with David. And then the last one, the fifth covenant, is a new covenant made through his son, Jesus Christ. There are three blood covenants. Abraham, Moses. Jesus. Blood covenants. Blood covenants are powerful. They are the highest form of covenants. It means when, a blood, when, when an animal is, or when blood is shed, it means life is given. And you're saying, I will give my life for this covenant. Can you imagine God saying, I'm giving my life for this covenant with you. Blood covenant. And on your side, I want all of you. Blood covenant. So this Deuteronomy 28 was given under the covenant of Moses to the people of Israel. Now, we may say, now why are you reading that? We are under the new covenant. Because Hebrews 8 and verse 6 says, we are under a better covenant with better promises. So the new covenant is a better covenant with better promises. So tell your neighbor, don't miss this. Yeah, just wake them up you know, in case they fall asleep. You know. Hey, this is a better covenant. Here's the best part. You know, A better covenant with better promises. That's the new covenant. So when we go to the old covenant and we read Deuteronomy 28, we can look at it and say, God, that was the old covenant. And if that's what you promised under the old covenant, how much more can we expect under the new covenant? Which the Bible says is a better covenant with better promises. That's the point I want us to get. Are you with me so far? So now when you look at Deuteronomy 28, the, the, this De Deuteronomy 28, this entire chapter can be divided very simply into two parts. And you don't have to be a Bible scholar to do that. Just looking at Deuteronomy 28, You'll see that the first 14 verses talk about blessings. And then verse 15 to 68 talk about curses. Blessings if you walk in obedience to the covenant God has with you. And if you disobey the covenant, if you break the covenant, then you're going to expose yourself to all these curses. And in another place, God tells his people, choose life. Choose blessings. Saying, That's what I want for you. I want you to choose this. So the curses are not God's desire for his people. They're just there to tell them, look, if you break the covenant, you're going to, go to, you're going to expose yourself to all of these things. It's not like I want that for you. Are you with me? It's just saying this is what will happen. But what does God want for his people? The first 14 verses. That's what I want for you. I want those blessings for you. What do you see there? And I, again, remember, this is the old covenant, but I, it helps us understand the heart of God. 
Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. I'm just going to skim through these verses. You can follow along with me, please. What do you see there in Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 14? Verse 2 says, all these blessings will come on you and overtake you if you obey the voice. So you obey my covenant. You obey my voice. You obey my word. This is, these are the blessings that will come on you. What kind of blessings are there? He says, you'll be blessed in the city, verse 3. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the country, verse 4. You'll be blessed. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, meaning your children, uh, the produce of your ground, the increase of your livestock, meaning what you're doing as a livelihood. In those days, they did the, that kind of livestock and farming. Today, it will be businesses, marketplace, industries. God would have pronounced those blessings on what we do. Verse 5, he says, blessed will be your basket and your kneading bowl. That means what you have in your home, the food you eat. Verse 6, blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed will you be when you go out. You'll be blessed all the time, coming in, going out. The blessing of God will be on you. Verse 7, God will give you victory over your enemies who come against you. He'll cause you to triumph. Verse 8, he will command his blessing on your storehouses, on, on your reserves, uh, and uh, he will bless you in the land where he is giving you. Verse 9. He will establish you as a holy people unto himself. And verse 10. Other people will see that you are called by the name of the Lord. They will see that. They will see God's hand on you. They will see God's favor on you. And verse 11. He will cause you to be plenteous in all your goods. And, and uh, verse 12. He will, he will open the windows of heaven and he will bless the land in which you, you, you are and the work that you are doing. So he's using their language, of course, and he may have described it in different words if he was speaking to us today. Essentially saying, I'll bless you and all that you're doing. And verse 13, he will cause you to rise up. He'll make you the head. And, uh, and he'll prosper you that way. And verse 14, all I'm asking you is to keep my word, my covenant. So, are these natural blessings? Are these, bless are these the blessings that affect our everyday life? Yes or no? Yes. They are blessings that affect our everyday life. And this is under the old covenant. So how much more? If we are under a covenant that is a better covenant and based on better promises. And if you read the curses 15 through 68, you'll find a complete, almost complete list of all kinds of problems you can ever think of. Mind problems, body problems, family problems, money problems, social problems. I mean, it's all listed there under the curses. Not a blessing. It's under the curse. Just God saying, I don't want those for you. You stay under my covenant. You'll enjoy these blessings. But if you violate the covenant, then this is what you're exposing yourself to. This will come on you. So stay under the covenant. So the point I want to make here is this. We are in a new covenant with Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ. There are spiritual blessings that we can enjoy and there are natural blessings which we can enjoy as part of our redemption blessings. But you and I must learn how to receive them and walk in them. I'll close with this example, of this incident in Luke, the 13th chapter. Jesus goes to the synagogue. And there he sees a woman who's been bent over for 18 years. She's been in that condition for a long time. And how does Jesus react to that? He says, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham? Why is he saying daughter of Abraham? She says, this woman is a daughter of Abraham. She is a woman who is in covenant with God. Through Abraham, God had a blood covenant with his people. Time has elapsed, but that covenant is still in force. And this woman is a daughter of Abraham. Ought not this woman who is a daughter of Abraham be loosed from this bond? So you can imagine, this woman has been coming to the synagogue and going, and she's been in that condition for many years, and she may have even died in that condition. While all along, she had the opportunity, she had this privilege, as a daughter of Abraham, to be freed from that. That was her blessing. It was available. 
but she could have died in that condition. But here comes Jesus and says, something is wrong. I need to set it right. She's a daughter of Abraham. She needs to be loosed from this bond this Sabbath day. She has to be free. And he sets her free. So many of us, we have our redemption blessings. If you and I don't make an effort to receive those blessings, you know, we're going to pass through life. Nothing's going to change. You're going to be saved. You're going to go on into your eternal redemption blessings. But I want to encourage you and I. There are redemption blessings that we can walk in here on this side of heaven. And we need to receive those blessings. For every area of our lives. For your home, for your family, for your children, for your, for your work. For your present, for your future. Every area, there are redemption blessings and you're united to receive it. Amen? And that's what we want to explore in the weeks to come. How do we receive? If Jesus Christ paid such a great price on the cross to purchase me spirit, soul, and body, to translate me from out from of darkness into the, his own kingdom, and he has qualified me to be a partaker of the inheritance that he gives to his people, then I think we should participate in it. Amen? We should participate. We should take it, become partakers of it. And say, God, I will walk in my redemption blessings here on this side of heaven. And sure, I will step into what you have for me in eternity. We will step into it. Sure. Let's talk about that in the weeks to come. Amen? So, we are people who have been redeemed. And we have redemption blessings that we can and should walk in. We will explore this in the coming weeks. Let's rise to our feet, please. And we'll take a few moments to pray. Amen. I know we already made our declaration. But the Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Got to say so. There's a there's a power in saying so. And we'll talk about that in the weeks to come. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So, whenever those... Sorry, just this is a... Whenever those three demons try to come, Akil needs to turn around and say to them, In Jesus' name, I am redeemed. You have no right over me. No claim over me. I shake you off. I am redeemed. He needs to say so. He needs to let them know that he knows that he is redeemed. That he's no longer blinded. Jesus said, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you. You can't blind me anymore. I know the truth. I am redeemed and I say so. My spirit, my soul, my body, everything about me is redeemed. It's been purchased. It belongs to God. It's Jesus Christ. I am his property. So we say so. And there's power in saying so. Amen? So let's say so. Let's say this together. In Jesus' name, I declare, I am redeemed. My body is redeemed. My mind is redeemed. My spirit is redeemed. My family is redeemed. My workplace is redeemed. Everything about my life has been redeemed and it belongs to God. And I will glorify God in every part of my, of my being. It all belongs to God. In Jesus' name, devil, I resist you. You have no place in me, no part in me. No claim over me. In Jesus name. I resist sickness and disease. I resist failure. I resist poverty. I resist confusion. I resist every form of oppression. In Jesus name. I resist. Every work of the devil. I am God's property. 
I am redeemed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me just pray over you. Father, we just made our declaration here. And God, you are witness to what the words we've spoken. And so, Father, right here, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray, God, that the healing power of God touch every person. I pray, God, that your mighty works take place in our lives, in our circumstances, in our situations, that that we walk as the redeemed of the Lord. That in every area of our lives, we see, we glorify God. We see the glory of God on display. We walk as a redeemed of the Lord. That every aspect of our lives, our homes, our families, our finances, every part of our lives will bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is Lord over every part of our being. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your healing, your provision, your deliverance, your victory being released over our lives right now. We thank you for it because we are the redeemed of the Lord. And we receive, Father, of the redemption blessings, of the inheritance that you've given to your saints, to your sons and daughters. We receive it here and now. We choose to walk in it here and now. We resist the enemy who tries to keep it away from us. We thank you. And we bless you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we close, I wonder if there's anyone here and you're not sure if that stuff happened to you. That coming out of darkness and being translated into God's kingdom. You're not sure if that's taken place in your life. It's very simple. You just need to do what that oracle did. You just had to pray. Say, Jesus, save me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Do this for me. And he'll do it for you. So we're going to take a moment to pray. If there's anyone here this morning and you're not sure if, if, if you have been redeemed, if that has taken place in your life, if you're not sure but you'd like to do that this morning, I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. Just like Habakkuk prayed, you can pray that prayer and Jesus Christ will do it in your life. Let's just take a moment to pray. If there's anyone here, you've never done this in your life but you want to do it this morning, just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I ask that you will deliver me. Forgive my sins. Come into my life. Make me a child of God. Bring me into your kingdom. And help me to follow you the rest of my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody here, you pray this prayer with me for the very first time in your life. Very first time, just put your hand up. I'd like to see you. If anyone, you prayed this prayer with me very first time this morning. Anyone here? Nobody? Okay, I don't see any hands. In case you pray that prayer for the very first time this morning, on your way out in all of our exits, there'll be greeters waiting, for, with a, uh, standing there with a green bag. So please tell them, I pray that prayer for the very first time. Can I have that bag? They'll give you a little card that you can write your name on and number on and just give it back to them and they give you this back. It has free resources we want you to take with you to help you grow in your spiritual journey. So if you pray this prayer with me for the very first time this morning, please make sure you do that. Amen? Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always in Jesus name Amen We trust that this message was a blessing to you We would love to hear from you You can email us at contact at apcwo.org Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources Thank you for listening and God bless you